This iron tastes and my mouth is cold. It reminds me of how fragile and easily brought death is. It sends shivers down my spine and tremors through my hand. It tears through my back with such fire that this must be how Oscar Grant felt. It's wrong that I can't breathe right, but something's in the air. It quiets my voice with heaviness. Is there more to this life than broken dreams and God? Am I just a dancer who got off beat? I can feel in my heart the repeat of Sylvia Plath and it swims to the top of this mouth filled with iron. Am I anything other than a failure? Should notes be written with this lead or will they be forgotten? Do names I speak fondly of mix my own with rust or too much alcohol? Am I the product of too many no's? And one mistaken yes that birthed my existence into this body? I cannot feel my lips. They have to steal and a chokehold like they are long distance lovers. Being close enough will never be close enough for them. They will proceed to go down this path of disastrous beauty and create a messy masterpiece. I'm sorry. I cannot keep the wrong from being inevitable. This mind isn't morally obligated to spare any details in this life. Never gave me guidelines. So this heart travels to meet these silent screams in my throat. It tries to convince me that dreams aren't just memories and that vodka can be a good friend. It says there is hope out there, captured in the eyes of children that are waiting to melt my questions into love and shake my hatred of this tomb of a stomach. But the Smith and Wesson disagrees. It screams of violence against children who just wanted some skittles of men who were brave enough to speak of change of women who were just trying to protect their frames from getting torn to shreds. And it speaks of forgiveness, which comes with forgetfulness in these bloodstained palms could use some deliverance. My tongue has become salty with expectations of human decency that has run this well of values dry. My bones are cracking under the weight of survival. We are jumbled up lies of, we are trying. We are picture perfect childbearing lips who spit on our own. I must be the only one who can taste just what happiness might be. So I tip my head back and I swallow this bullet like a pill of I'm sorry, but this world will need a bomb of a king's speech to clean this mess up. Lila Flower, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good, good. Tell us about why you write. Oh, well, I kind of have a two-part story to that. I used to write to help myself just deal with things and getting things out a healthy way. But now I write to give back to people and to let them know that they're definitely not the only ones going through anything in the world and to try and make change in community and society. Okay. How do you feel that your words give back? I feel that I'm always trying to, now, I'm always trying to relate to people um, because a lot, of, a lot of the time we like to forget that we're all the same. And then we all feel the same feelings and we like to pretend that we're the only ones. And so I feel like now I definitely try to relate more to people so that they, they can sit in that audience and be like, hey, she's talking about da 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 and I went through that. So now we have a mutual connection and they understand that they're definitely not the only ones fighting anything or going through any type of struggle. Everybody goes through this. I'm just speaking about it. Nice. And now we're, we're kind of family. Nice. Nice. So you talk about connection. Um, who would you say was a poet that was a, a major connection, major influence for you? Uh, I have a lot of those. Um, you got probably, time. You speak on all of them. Probably um, my most major connection that who influences me and that I just truly hold dear to my heart is Starry Lyle. She's one of my best friends in the poetry world. And... Um, we just, you know, her poetry is so beautiful and raw and we just, I don't know, she inspires me to be better. And also Moody Black, when I first got introduced to the um, Coffee Underground and just poetry in general, spoken word, he was kind of like my mentor kind of thing and, you know, he always gives positive feedback, so, but he always builds you up and helps you realize what you could do better. So he's great. And then, of course, my team is great. And 
they're a really big influential part of my life so those would be my like my top seven right okay okay <laughs> so what's your involvement with spoken word spartanburg and how has it influenced you um, I'm on a team called Old Soul, and um, it's through Spoken Word Spartanburg, and it's amazing. If you haven't heard, we're winners. No, <laughs> we're, we're a really great team, and we're really great people, and we have a great sense of camaraderie, and we're family, and I love it that we're all so vastly different, and we all come from so many different backgrounds, but yet we all mesh, and we all... We all click and nobody thinks they're better than the other and there's no judgment at all it's a very judgment free zone and we just accept everybody as they are and that's that's great to me because you don't find that a lot anywhere mm. and so to find that amongst people who are not only poets and artists in the same way that you are but you guys all become friends and family it's amazing and then we do a lot through the community I feel like it's really it's really helping this community and building it up. And nice. They don't have anything like that here in Spartanburg, really. So they're definitely making waves. What what type of, um, how do you feel it's influenced the community? What type of things? I feel like it's definitely given people a place to go for their voices to be heard. And like I said before, as far as relating goes, it's very therapeutic just if you're listening. So it's helping people heal themselves whether they're speaking or they're just listening and it's also helping movement and helping people open their eyes like things through poetry and conversation it's a very open space and we talk about things in the community and just society in general that need to be talked about and it's very uncomfortable for most people to talk about but that's good because that means that we can we can step over that roadblock and then we can keep going and make a better a better world for us to live in and that's, that's amazing because so many people don't want to talk about things like that. And when you do talk about things like that, that's where your change can come from. Nice, nice. So, so, so this is your elevator speech time. So if you had last, last words, what would your last words be? Um, whatever you're going through, definitely don't give up. Definitely don't think that you're, you don't matter. Definitely think, don't think that you're not important. Remember that you're a person and you're here for a reason and you're not the only one going through whatever it is you're going through and express yourself through different forms of art is the best therapy anybody could ever have so just definitely don't forget that you're not alone so, so tell us who you are I'm Lila Flower and where can people find you you can find me on Facebook at Lindsay Lila Flower Stevens um, and that's it how do you spell Lindsay? How do you spell Stevens? You spell Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, and then Lila is L-Y-L-A, and then Flower, and then Stevens is with a B. All right. Thank you. Thank you.